Excellent. So you just downloaded that file because you want to start making trap beats. That's amazing. Welcome aboard. Today I'm going to teach you step by step, actually in 10 steps, how to create trap beats. The most important and crucial thing about all this is creating a workflow. And this will develop in time. The more time you spend in a file, the faster you'll create a workflow. Step one is deciding what type of beat you want to make. Something that works for me is listening to a specific artist before I start producing. This puts me in a vibe that I want to be in. You should give it a try. Step two, set the BPM or speed of your beat. Open up a file and head over to the BPM section. For trap beats, you can set a BPM between 130 and 150, but there's nothing wrong with going below or above that. If you found a song that you want to use as an inspiration, let it play in the background and tap along with the tempo tapper, which you can find here. Now the BPM of your project file is synced with the song. Step three, creating a simple and repetitive melody because you know, trap beats. Open up the channel rack and click on this little plus icon. This will open up a list of plugins and VSTs you have installed. Choose one to your likings, for example, Flex. Once it's open, go to the preset list and find a short and simple sound, like a bell or something. Oh, this one is really great for trap melodies. Open up the piano roll and here you can draw in notes by left clicking. You can remove them again by right clicking, simple. But it doesn't sound good, Timo. Let me help you with that. That is because you're not working in a scale. For dark trap melodies, we wanna work in a minor scale. To choose one, open up the menu on the top left and select view. Then scale highlighting and make sure the minor natural is selected. Then choose your scale right here. I'm gonna go for the D minor scale. You can always change this afterwards. The highlighted notes are the one in that scale which means you can use them. Create a melody that sounds good for you. Go ahead, I'll, I'll wait. Okay, this is what I came up with. Beautiful. Now the art of making trap beats is making a boring melody, but make it interesting enough for someone to listen to for three minutes straight. Simplicity is catchy, but it also has to stay interesting. I'll teach you how to do that further along in this video. Step four, it's time for the drums. A trap beat usually comes with an 808 and a kick, a snare, clap, hi-hat, and some percussive sounds. Today we're gonna focus mainly on the first one. We're gonna start with the closed hi-hat. Drag it inside the channel rack and right click it. Select fill each two steps and this will place a note every two steps. Now it's sounds like this. This is really boring, but we can spice things up. Open up the piano roll and the first thing we're gonna do is play with the velocity. This is basically how loud the note plays. If you give the velocity random values, the hi-hat patterns will sound more groovy. That is because a drummer in real life can't possibly hit his cymbals with the exact same force every time. We're not gonna do anything else with the hi-hat yet. Because for now it's only there to give us an ID for the flow. But we'll come back later to tweak the pattern. Step 5. Adding a clap. Open up the piano roll and simply place a clap right here. Keep doing that till the end of the loop. You can also play with the velocity of the clap, but I like to keep it harsh and static for this beat. Next we're gonna add some snares and you're gonna see that it really helps create a flow. You probably recognize this because you can hear it everywhere. Step six, creating an 808 pattern. The first and most important thing you wanna do is right click your sample and select cut itself. This will make sure that the notes don't overlap or in other words, when another note starts, the previous one will be cut off. Okay, now we can draw in an 808 pattern. The melody is made in the D minor scale and it also starts with a D note. This means that the 808 will also sound best as a D. Create a simple pattern, but make sure you stay inside the scale you're in. And that sounds awesome. Now to make it knock even harder, we're gonna add a kick to the channel rack. Open up the piano roll and lay down the same pattern as the 808. The 808 and kick are now playing at the same time and this can create some issues, for example clipping. To fix that, we're gonna sidechain the kick with the 808. Send both the samples to a mixer track and give it a name, you know, to stay organized. Select the kick and right click on the arrow of the 808. Then choose sidechain to this track. Select the 808 mixer and add the fruity limiter effect to it. Head over to the compressor and right click on the sidechain list. Then select the kick. Increase the ratio to its max and also increase the attack a little bit. Then decrease the threshold until you see the kick biting in the 808. 
we just did is we made space for the kick by ducking the 808 when the kick plays. If you want the 808 to hit even harder, you can add a distortion effect to it. I made an entire video about that, so go watch that next. Step seven, changing up the hi-hat pattern. First I wanna say is keep it simple. I know that complicated patterns can sound really amazing, but that can really limit the rapper to finding a flow to your beat. And if he can't find one, he'll, he'll just throw your beat in the trash. So you can add an extra note here and there. This depends on the melody. But the biggest mistake we all made is putting hi-hat rolls at the wrong location. Let me give you an example where you can put it. Draw in a note right before the clap plays. Then select it and hit Alt U on your keyboard. This will open up the chopper. With the time multiplicator, you can tell FL how many chops you want to create. Click accept and look at that. To make it sound even better, create a velocity curve like this. Sounds amazing. Step eight, making the melody more interesting. Here we have the melody in a playlist. It would be boring if it sounded the same for the entire beat. So one thing you can do is duplicate it and right click on this icon here. Then select make unique. Now you can double click this pattern and change things inside. But the original one will stay the same. Select all the notes by hitting Control A on your keyboard. Hit Control and arrow down to lower it by one octave. Now you have this variation in your melody and people will stay interested for a longer time. Step 9. Using automation clips to make your melodies even more interesting. Make sure the melody is routed to a mixer track and open up the fruity reverb effect. Decrease the dry slider to 0 and increase the wet to 100. Now close the effect and right click on the mix knob. Then select create automation clip. This will create of course an automation clip in the playlist and with this one you can now control the reverb. You can use this in the intro of your beat for example. With these two points you can put more or less reverb to the melody. Add a little reverb to it for as long as the intro plays. Once the drums drop, cut all the reverb out. This will make the chorus hit harder. told you. Step 10. Beat structure. You need to know how to structure your beats because you want to of course finish your beat. I made an entire video about beat structuring right here so go check that out. It would be really stupid if I just repeated everything I say in this video so go watch it now. Gotta go now. Goodbye. <laughs>